Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and you gotta stop looking for the perfect match. Just use a lighter. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam today called Pandemic Train, developed by Trigger Labs and published by Games Operators and Playway SA. Released not in early access and selling for 17 American dollars. This is a train survival game. Hell, I love management games. I love survival games. I love the whole idea of this game, so let's dive right in, shall we? By the way, I'd like to apologize for my ugly thumbnail today. My usual guy can't get it to me in time, so I hope you like the awful picture I clumsily scrambled together. Now, basically, in this game, the world has fallen to ruin. I can't really remember why. You are part of the Survivor's League in Europe, and you're trying to survive, basically, and destroy your arch nemesis organization and figure out what happened and how to bring goodness back to the world. Kind of rebuild it after you've killed all the baddies kind of thing. Now, when I first saw this game, I saw the train management thing and thought to myself, oh, that's, that's pretty awesome looking. A whole new way to look at a survival management game. Then I saw the top-down shooter part and cringed a little. I don't normally like those kinds of games, no matter what genre. I like to be able to see ahead of me, not just down at the top of my dude's head. I mean, what sense does that make? Shouldn't the person be able to see as far as the eye can see? Isn't that the point of having eyes? So why be severely limited? But whatever, that's my main reason for not normally gravitating towards games like that. But don't let that statement make you think that I don't know what I'm doing or that I won't judge this fairly, because I am going to judge this fairly. Now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, shall we? So up first for the positives, because we always do the good first, is the originality, the idea, the whole thought process of this game. A management sim where you take care of your people in a train traveling across Europe. Think of it in terms of this war of mine. It's very similar to that. You take care of your people's needs and customize your base during one phase, and the next phase, you're out exploring dangerous war-torn areas with dangers. Just like in This War of Mine, you have people you can recruit, baddies you can fight or sneak up on, people to trade with, loot, and miscellaneous things to scavenge, and the list goes on. But the idea of it being a constantly moving train with various different paths, different choices, different enemies, all because you're on a train choosing where you go next based on what you need, I, I mean, it's a very unique and original idea, and I love it. And that's what had me gravitate towards this game in the first place. The next positive thing that I want to talk about is the sound and musical effects. The sound effects sound like you'd want. I wish the train part sounded more like a train, but still, overall, the sound effects aren't bad. They're not the worst I've ever heard. Not the best, but not the worst. The music is great, though. It's very similar to this War of Mine, by the way, with that kind of depressing music, but possibly a bit of hope mixed into it. Like, it's very thematic, and it fits the theme and the mood perfectly. The game does have partial voice acting here and there, the opening cutscene for one, and then the different villains you'll meet along the way. And for the most part, it's all really, you know, it's done fairly well. Up next for the positives is the tutorial. It has a great little learning thing here. It's easy to understand, easy to learn, simple and direct with a hint of complexity. With a hint of complexity, sorry, the further you get into the game. All taught to you in a charming little way. I love the tutorial. The next thing I want to talk about is that price tag. In today's day and age where you have to choose between buying food this week or gas for your car for a day, it's nice to see some games out there cutting us a little slack. And for a game like this, this finished with... The multiple replayability options and the unique gaming experience per playthrough, a $17 price tag is awesome to see. Up next is the stability. I don't know how others are experiencing the game, but for me, I didn't notice a single bug or glitch. Okay, you know what? Actually, I just thought about it. That's not true. I did experience some slight frame rate dropping popping up randomly, but it was very minor and barely noticeable. Overall, I didn't experience any real game-breaking or immersion-breaking bugs or glitches of any kind, and that's expected of fully released games. Too bad the other fully released games didn't get the memo. And last but not least is the gameplay. So remember at the beginning I said that I don't normally like top-down shooters? Well, I mean, I still don't. However, this game somehow made it fun even for someone like me. How? Well, simple. They didn't overly complicate it. They didn't make it super bombastic. You know, just point and click to shoot. Duck to hide, heal, simple equipment, small level designs that you can get through quickly with a clear goal in mind for each place. Plus, they have the camera at an angle that can be a bit awkward at times. However, it never makes it hard for you to see enemies or loot or whatever, which has always been my issue with games like this. But let's talk about the gameplay just a bit here. So there are two basic gameplay loops, the management of the train and the exploration. The management of the train has you building rooms, using those rooms to craft different supplies that you may need. Like, you're going to need food and water for each of your crew so they can stay healthy. You can also craft medicine. I think you can craft guns, but I know you can craft bullets. And I'm sure there's more. I mean, you can have a chicken coop or a, a, a pen for cows. And I could keep going of all the different things that you can build on your train that will end up helping you in some way, shape, or form. But you can even hire someone to expand your train by building you a new train car, which is a cool idea as well. So keep your people well fed, healed up, happy, because they have a morale thing, and craft as much supplies as you can so you can survive these wastes. 
And the second part is the exploration. From what I saw there, uh -huh. there are three different types of exploration, at least so far in my gameplay. You've got the friendly one, where you can run into people who will sell you stuff, give a quest, or be recruited oh, yeah. to your crew. The hostile one, where you're exploring and looting resources while fighting off bandits or mutants. Then the boss ones, where you fight a leader of the arch enemy organization against yours. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, conserve your resources, gather as much as you can, and get back to your train safely. You can also make dialogue oh, choices, yeah. story-driven choices oh. that'll affect your train or your crew, and overall, okay. there's just a lot to explore and play around with here, and all of it's pretty fun and pretty well done. Alright, so that's all I got to say about the positives. Now we got to go into the negatives. But before that, please consider supporting my channel. When it's small like this, its growth is also small. But you guys can help, and I really mean it when I say you can help. I mean, think about it. One day you can say, I was one of the people in the beginning who helped him get off the ground. And I will try my best to remember each and every one of you. But you got to subscribe. You got to comment. You got to share my content online to get it more attention. Those are the best ways to help me be seen. And if you comment, it helps me to remember you. So please, consider helping me out today. Now then, onto the negatives, which I don't really want to do because I was actually really enjoying myself while playing this game. So, up first for the negatives is the game's overall disappointing size, and what I mean by that is that the game is a bit lackluster in a lot of ways. Now, don't get me wrong, it is fun, and for what is there, it's very well designed, but it's clearly only worth its $17 price tag, and you can feel it when you play it. There's no epic cutscenes, and really the only thing the game lets you customize, they're kind of expected, but minor also. Uh, still cool, just... You know, it's a small game represented by its small price tag. That's it. That, like, that's not even that bad of a negative, to be honest. The next negative I have is that despite the game having a good replayability function, it also borders on possibly becoming a bit too repetitive. Go here. Explore this similar map. Go there. Explore that similar map. Go here and explore this similar map. Over and over again. It does vary it up here and there by taking you to different biomes, and while it may look different on the surface, it plays almost the exact same way. Kinda hard to tell only a couple hours in, but yeah, I don't expect it to change very much in this repetitive gameplay. Again, a kind of a minor negative that I was also kind of expecting, but still, I felt like I needed to bring it up regardless. And last but not least for the negatives is the balance. Now, I don't know about all y'all out there, but even with my game set to easy difficulty for the sake of doing a review, the game was still a bit unbalanced to me. They didn't give me enough water, didn't give me enough building materials, and everything to build costs a huge amount when then each level only gives you a pittance of what you need. I traveled to 12 different places without getting the materials I needed for just one room. Obviously, all of my people died because I built the wrong things in the beginning and wasn't sure what I should be building. And I'm not exactly sure how I could have changed that except for building this other kind of building, which th or this room, which then would have sacrificed the other room which was helping me. So you see what I'm saying? Like, and I was taking huge risks to scavenge as much as I could and it still wasn't giving me enough. So maybe the balance is a bit off or maybe I was just getting really unlucky, but it's not exactly a very fun prospect to want to try and do this again if I'm just going to end up getting the same result. And yeah, that's all I got for the negatives. Uh, and hell, let's be honest, I was kind of nitpicking here, struggling to find something negative to say to try to keep this review balanced. But honestly, in my opinion, the game is really well put together. It's very well designed, it has a good idea that it wanted that it wanted us to allow us to explore, and overall, in my opinion, it did a great job. I, I really can't think of a reason not to give this game a try, so yeah, I recommend this. If you like survival management games, or if you like top-down shooters, then again, I highly recommend this. I mean, think about it, we're talking a fully fleshed out game here, without bugs, with a fun concept and a new idea and interesting gameplay. I mean, you don't see a lot of those anymore. So, I really like this game. I don't give ratings, but if I did give this one a rating, it'd probably be way above average for a typical game released in this style. And, I don't know, what's more to say? I, I think everyone out there who sees this video should consider giving this game a solid chance. I really do think you should try it out. Alright? Alright, so that's all the time I got for this video, everybody. Uh, for all of you who decided to check it out, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.